York City, the Big Apple. With a population of nearly 7 million, it's the largest city in the United States. And with the end of the Great Depression finally in sight, times are starting to look up. By 1939, the era of vaudeville, flappers, and prohibition has given way to big band jazz, sleek automobiles, and a renewed economic boom. While trouble may be brewing over in Europe, the United States is taking full advantage of peace times. There's always something to do in and out of town. Heading over to Staten Island? You can catch the Staten Island Ferry down by Battery Park. In a hurry to get to the Upper West Side or over to Long Island? Hop on the city's extensive rapid transit system. And if you're planning to travel somewhere out of town, say Chicago, Illinois, then you'd best make your way to Grand Central Terminal located in the heart of Manhattan at 42nd and Park Avenue. Originally constructed in 1871 and rebuilt in 1913, Grand Central Terminal covers 17 acres and cost $43 million to complete, closer to a billion in today's dollars. In order to serve 50,000 people each day, the new terminal was designed with two levels, 17 lower level and 32 upper level platforms, allowing nearly 100 trains a day to arrive and depart. Passengers traveling to destinations out of town head to the upper level, and those staying within the New York City area continue down to the lower level. At the upper level on track 34, preparations are underway for train number 25, the New York Central's flagship train, the 20th Century Limited. Complete with red carpet treatment, the new 20th Century Limited is an all-Pullman lash-up of lightweight, modernized, innovative design. A postal and baggage car, two dining cars, nine sleepers, and a sleeper buffet lounge observation car brings up the rear. It's first class from end to end, and no accommodation was left unchecked. There are drawing rooms, single and double bedrooms, smoking sections, hardwood finishings, a fully stocked library, maid service, a barber shop, and a dinner menu complete with porterhouse steaks. It's not cheap, but for New York City's most elite, that's not a problem. Scheduled to depart in 15 minutes, the 20th Century Limited is destined for Chicago's LaSalle Street Station, a 961-mile journey overnight in just 16 hours. Heading north to Albany and then west to Buffalo, the train will traverse the railroad's famous water level route. At the head of the train is one of the Central's T1 third rail electric locomotives, number 250. Since steam locomotives are not permitted within the city limits or the Park Avenue tunnel, number 250 will power the train the first 32 miles to Harmon, where the T1 will be swapped for steam. Departing right at 5 p.m., the most famous train in the world is underway. It's non-stop running from here to Harmon. At 97th Street, the Century exits the Park Avenue Tunnel and begins its trek north through East Harlem and the Bronx. Up the line at Harlem, the replacement locomotive, number 5450, waits patiently for the 20th century to arrive. Number 5450 is a 464 J3A Hudson-type locomotive, built by the American Locomotive Company in 1938. While relatively similar to the other 50 J3As on the roster, number 5450, along with nine other Hudsons, have all been fitted with streamlined shrouding designed by Henry Dreyfus. 
These Hudsons, nicknamed Dreyfus Hudsons, are equipped with 79-inch drivers and carry a boiler pressure of 265 pounds. They produce 41,000 pounds of tractive effort, allowing them to race a 17-car train at over 90 miles an hour. Speed like that is accomplished with ease, thanks to carefully sized sullen disc drivers and lightweight roller bearing rods. The tender has a coal capacity of 28 tons. Only one stop for coal will be needed between here and Chicago. Water capacity is 13,600 gallons. A water scoop under the tender allows for water to be picked up intermittently from track pans along the route without needing to stop to fill up. At long last, the 20th century comes into view. Only five minutes is scheduled for this stop, so the locomotive exchange will be done in earnest to keep with the tight 16-hour schedule. After a quick brake test and the acquisition of more passengers, number 5450 wastes no time getting the train moving again. Spring, New York, the train passes through Breakneck Ridge Tunnel. This is one of the most photographed locations along the water level route. Daylight fading fast, the train departs westbound out of Albany Union Station with a new crew in command. At Oneida, New York, 
The 5450 has the train really moving as she pierces through the dark. Central Terminal in Buffalo, New York, marks the halfway point at milepost 439.5. Here, more passengers will board, and another engine crew will take over the locomotive. Approaching Conrad, Ohio, water is picked up on the fly using the tender's water scoop. Just outside Englewood, Illinois, the 20th Century Limited and the Pennsylvania Railroad's Broadway Limited are neck and neck racing for Chicago. This is no coincidence, though. It actually happens twice every day, once in each direction. Both trains are scheduled to arrive in Chicago at 8 a.m. After 16 hours, covering 961 miles, spanning five states, the 20th Century Limited has finally arrived in Chicago, Illinois, right on time. For those aboard the train, it's been a soothing, comfortable ride, lavished with all top-tier porter services and exceptional accommodations. For the engine crews, it's been another test of time, boasting 100 years of steam locomotive developments all compacted into a seemingly endless energy-producing iron horse. Although this run has finished, work for the crew is not over, not by a long shot. Once all the passengers have disembarked, the train will be turned and shoved back into the station, while the locomotive will be moved to the engine surfacing facility to be prepared for the return to New York later in the afternoon. For more information on the 20th Century Limited and other models available for Train Simulator, visit KNL Trains online at www.kltrains.com. Thanks for watching.